Hey everybody, Peeps here. Recently I went over my top 10 best GameCube games. Make sure you check that video out if you haven't already. And now it's time for the worst list. But before we jump into that, I just want to say one thing first. Ever since the Wii came out, a lot of people like to say that the GameCube is useless now because of backwards compatibility, but the GameCube has another use that not a lot of people know about. Let's go check it out. All right, well, first things first. You see this thing right here? Just go ahead and take that thing off. Uh, we don't need it. I don't even really know what it does anyways. All right, now here is where the fun part begins. And perfect. It's a drink coaster. All right, top 10 worst GameCube games. Let's, let's do it. Wait, hold on. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm good. Let's, let's go. I know this may come as a surprise to many of you, but American Chopper 2 Full Throttle is not very good. What? No! I know this might not be the best game choice to start this video off with, since I really doubt many of my subscribers are big American Chopper fans, but if I have to walk into my local game store, which I go to fairly often by the way, and buy this piece of crap with a straight face, and then put together and paint a stupid motorcycle with absolutely no music for 15 minutes, then you guys have to listen to me talk about it. Whew, getting a little bit uh, contentious already here. Uh, sorry about that. Vroom, vroom, smash! I'm unstoppable! The rest of Motorcycle Family won't be able to make fun of Little Mikey anymore after they see this! Rest in peace. Remember Space Invaders? You know, the classic arcade game where you shoot aliens that slowly move down the screen. Well, what do you know, they made a new one for the GameCube called Space Raiders, an homage to the original that was released in 1978. Wait, what's that? You think that sounds like a bad idea? Well, you're right. It was a bad idea. First of all, the barriers you hide behind in Space Invaders are actually useful. You can hide behind them, shoot through them, etc. The barriers in Space Raiders, though, do absolutely nothing except get in the way. In fact, most of the time, I just blow them up myself as soon as I get the chance. Other than that, Space Raiders would maybe be a passable, albeit completely forgettable, arcade-style shoot-em-up game if it weren't for the fact that there's no challenge to it whatsoever. Not only do you get infinite continues, you don't even have to restart the level when you die. You just get right back up! Anyone, regardless of skill level, can beat this. The only requirement is being able to press the A button and being able to find an hour and a half of free time. Which, I mean, in this modern day and age is actually not that easy, am I right? <laughs> You guys, you guys know what I'm saying. And it certainly doesn't hurt, or help, I guess, that the story and dialogue are some of the worst I've ever come across. My town, it has been destroyed. I'm not ready to die. I'll survive this. Huh? Wake up. Uh... Ah! Uh... Don't hate me because I kill you. I would go further into this game for you, but honestly... I'm very tired. I need a rest. Wow! If you're subscribed to this channel... <clears throat> Man, Keith is really sold out recently. Then you may remember my top 10 worst party games list. Well, I've since realized there's a lot of terrible party games I missed on that list, one of them being Disney Party. Disney Party attempts to deviate from the traditional Mario Party style gameplay in a few different ways. Rather than collecting stars, you collect items throughout the game to place on your game board, and you then try to line up rows of them similar to Bingo. But you don't just place items on your board, you can also place offensive style items on your opponent's game board in order to block them. Admittedly, the block items are a pretty cool concept, but they do have one major flaw. 
they make the game last longer, which is a bad thing because the game is very, very boring and way too long as it is. There's a handful of different ways to get items, but the main one is to win the mini games. And speaking of the mini games, if you're into sadistic humor, they can be pretty funny. There's a skydiving game where players fall towards the ground, smacking their helpless bodies on the protruding cliff sides. I'm sorry, children, but Mickey Mouse is dead. There is no way he survived that. And a game where they get electrocuted by laser beams. I don't know, something about seeing Minnie Mouse get shocked to death is both utterly disturbing and completely hilarious at the same time. But most of them, just like the rest of the game, are boring, dull, and go on for far too long. There's other ways to get items besides the mini games, but they're mostly random like this one person can receive a lot of crystals event. No, it wasn't. I actually think that the game board aspect of Disney Party was an interesting change of pace for the genre, but it barely ends up mattering anyway. After the game is over, Scrooge hands out a bunch of other stupid awards, like who randomly selected the most events on the spin wheel, who pressed buttons the fastest, and who did the best in this dance party mini game that plays at the end. All of those add up, and the player with the most awards is the winner, which is... which is... Just great! Definitely glad I spent two hours filling out my game board just so this dumb dance thing could render all of it pointless. I'm super happy. Sweet dance moves, everybody. I'm totally not bitter at all. Oh, goody. Aquaman. The game where you swim around and punch people in the face. And that's it. Level one. Oh, no. Atlantis is being attacked by these guys. Level two. Oh no, Atlantis is being attacked by these guys. Level three. Oh no, Atlantis is, is being attacked by, by these guys. The story's not even good. The main enemy is motivated by, can you guess it? Treasure. He just wants treasure. Pretty, pretty creative, wouldn't you say? And of course you can't forget that one scene where he talks to a whale. It was a pretty good conversation. Uh, consisted of a solid one sentence. And speaking of sea creatures, I almost forgot Aquaman's power is that he can talk and communicate to sea creatures and stuff. So of course, he can do this awesome trick. Check it out. Cool. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> That's enough of that, I think. Monsters Inc. Scream Arena. You know what I think of when I think of Monsters Inc.? Dodgeball. Duh. Eh. Eh. You can't get me. You can't get me. This game is incredibly lackluster. There's basically nothing to it at all. It's just level after level after level of throwing balls at other guys that are throwing balls at you. The fact that it's only at number six, just trust me, says a lot more about the remaining games on the list than it does this one. The gameplay may be a monotonous and uninspired mess, but no worries, they keep you interested by unlocking new characters as you progress. Like this red guy, or this blue guy, or these other guys that I didn't feel like playing for long enough to reveal. You can't make me. I won't do it. I WILL DO IT! This is pretty sad to say, but I think by far the best part of this game is the brief portion of the intro cutscene where the kid smacks his face on the desk. Alright, we got some important safety information. Some socks may be slippery on the pad. Bare feet... Uh, well, if you have a heart respiratory back or joint or other... Uh, or I can't, I can't read it. It's too fast. I can't, I can't read it. Oh boy, this isn't good. I'm not gonna know the proper safety protocols. I might have so much fun that I die. That went by too quickly. I'm gonna have to sue. You, you, you thought you covered all your bases, but I caught you on a technicality. 
time to pay up! Growing up as the little brother of the family, I used to always get the crappy off-brand controllers that no one else wanted to use. We all know the company behind most of those, Mad Cats. But you may not have known that Mad Cats made a game. A freaking Dance Dance Revolution ripoff, no less, called MC Grooves. You know, if you hadn't already seen the logo which you probably did. And just in case you're feeling bad because I'm making fun of them right now, don't bother. They knew what they were doing. It's not like they were actually trying to make a fun game and just screwed it up. They made this game specifically to try and sell their Mad Cat's dance pad. This game is so lazy that they couldn't even bother to make the dance moves match the music most of the time. Playing this pretty much equates to listening to some random cover songs while randomly flopping around in your room. I don't personally have the Mad Cat's dance pad, and I didn't want to pay for it, considering I was already buttered I spent 350 on this freaking game. So I just used my DDR Mario Mix one. The only problem with that is that a lot of the songs in the game utilize the top left and right and bottom left and right inputs. Well, the Mario pad I have doesn't have a bottom left or right input. Not that it really matters anyway, because it doesn't matter if you even get anything right in the game in the first place. You can just stand there the whole time and do nothing. It doesn't matter at all. Nice approach. Does this look exciting to you? No? Well, you're not gonna like the next game on this list very much, Universal Studios Theme Park Adventure. Yes, most of the game, roughly 90% of it even, is spent aimlessly running around the park trying to figure out where the heck you're supposed to go next, picking trash up off the ground, or shaking hands with creepy looking mascots for points. And once you finally do find the theme park rides, aka crappy minigames, they aren't much better either. All of them are bad, but some of them like the Jurassic Park one are incredibly long. Long too. For real, who decided this game was so fun, it's not, that it needed to go on for 10 plus minutes. 10 minutes of shooting dinosaurs in the face and spamming the A button as fast as you can because for some reason you have to do that instead of just holding it down and auto firing. The game may not have good mini games or good anything at all, but it does have a lady shaking a GameCube controller up and down to let you know whether the rumble is on or off. A feature so necessary that every game should have it as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> One more thing though, why won't Woody Woodpecker stop staring at me? Seriously, everywhere I go, he looks. I, I cannot escape his gaze. It's starting to freak me out. Okay, I, I think I need an adult. I, I, I think I think I need an adult. I need a, I need an, I need, I need an adult, okay? Somebody get over here quick! <laughs> Have fun! Oh boy, Charlie's freaking angels. Aw oh yeah, just look at that smile. Just look at that posture. 20 second ladder climb? Now that's what I call fan service. Looking, looking pretty sexy. I guess. This game is already well known on the internet for being terrible and can confirm. <laughs> Why is everybody attacking me? It's completely unprovoked. I was just at a bikini contest, stepped down, and everyone started beating the crap out of me. Why can't I never get anything above a not bad rating when I kill someone? I honestly can't figure it out. And why is there a butt attack? Okay, I guess I know the answer to that one. Which reminds me, maybe don't read the user reviews for this game online because they're, uh, Kinda creepy. Although I do like this one. I never really played this game, but if I ever do play it, I think I might like it. Seven out of 10. You know, playing bad games can be funny, but I think this is the game that has finally broken me. I'm starting to miss those good GameCube games. Where are you? And I'm so sorry. I cannot sleep, I cannot dream tonight. I need somebody and always. Strange darkness comes creeping on, so haunting every time. At number two, I have Bad Boys Miami Takedown. You better stop. I always knew that stuff couldn't you better shoot stop for shooting my partner. Yeah. If you keep doing that, you're gonna be in real big trouble. Uh, 
If you don't stop really, really soon, I'm, I might have to get the handcuffs out or something. Wait, wait, You're really time, starting dude. to Don't test me here, dude. man. In Bad Boys, you switch off playing as two Miami cops, Marcus Burnett and Mike Lowry. Although I don't see how you'd know that they were cops unless you were paying attention because I'm pretty sure they never wear a uniform at any point during the entire game. It's just two guys running around shooting wave after wave of people. Seriously, they shoot so many people in this game. I, I don't know how much they're making a year, but this stuff has got to be above their pay grade. I'm not an expert, but maybe bring in the military or something for, for events that involve shooting like over 50 people, maybe? Or just these two guys running around with pistols. I mean, whatever works, I guess. And I hope you enjoy shooting people because other than the occasional boss, er, excuse me, boss That's all this game has to offer. Well, I guess that's not entirely true. There's plenty of A-plus cutscenes to go around. Why the hell you let her go? I let her go? You supposed to catch her. I was too busy watching your because you was too busy watching hers. Hey, guys, uh, no rush or anything, but there are, there are men, there are men shooting at you. Might want to, might want to do something about it. Or how about my favorite, this one. I'll give back the money you lost. I'll put up with your shitty breath. I'll even listen to your constant dub dub bullshit. But no one calls me a commie. I'll put up with people unsubscribing. I'll put up with bad comments. I will put up with people saying Mario teaches typing is not the best game ever made. But no one calls me a commie. I'm going to fly for you. At number one, I have Shrek Extra Large. <laughs> this game is not only very, very bad, and possibly the worst game I've ever played, it's so bad that it makes me upset. And that's actually the real me saying that. I'm, it makes me upset. It makes me upset that I have to sit here and talk about it. it. Makes me upset that I have to look through the footage and put it up on the screen so you can look at it. And I don't like the way this guy says cookies. Cookies! I don't like the way this troll thing looks either. I don't like the way the game lags all the time. I don't like how I have to fart in this cow's face in order to beat this level. And I don't like how Shrek burps all the time. <laughs> Something really upsetting about that. This game is the most unappealing form of media I have ever consumed. I was not even planning on putting it this n at number one at first, and then I played it, and the choice was made for me. Playing bad games because I think it's funny, but I can't lie, I also need the money. Gotta bring in those YouTube views, at least until I land that roll on blues clues. <laughs> The name's Peanut Butter, but they call me Peeps. I make videos for a bunch of freaking weebs. I hear you type and don't make fun of your audience, but it's like they say cockiness is next to godliness. Nobody says that, like, like at all. For, for real, you gotta cut it out. We're gonna lose subscribers. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. I played that Shrek game, now my mind's gone bare. Oh, there ain't nothing left up in there. watching my video. Sorry about the weeb thing. That was just a joke. Cookies! Wow! This video is sponsored by Upsy. You know that moment when you buy a new phone or electronic device and the cashier says, you want to buy a protection plan with that? It's, it's only like a billion dollars a month. Uh, no thanks. I'm good. Well, it's not that you don't want the warranty in case it breaks, it's that it's so freaking expensive. Often there's straight up scams inflating the warranty margins by up to 900%. That's freaking crazy, I didn't even know that. Well, it's time to stop overpaying for warranties with Upsy. Say you get the new Samsung Galaxy S9. If you go through a carrier, a warranty's gonna cost you 12 bucks a month. That's $288 for two years. But if you go with Upsy, a warranty for the S9 or other smartphones is only $79.99 for two years. And I don't know if you're good at math, but uh, you're saving uh, a lot. 
It's a lot. Plus, you have up to 45 days to protect your new smartphone or device, so if you just bought something recently, Upsy still got your back. If you go to Upsy.com with the link in the description below and use my code PBG10, not only to help support me and my channel, you also save yourself 10% on your first Upsy purchase. 10%! I don't know, let me see how much is that. It's a lot! Okay, it's a lot! So what are you waiting for? Go protect yourself with Upsy today! Hurry up! Go! I gotta, I gotta go do it, actually. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching my video. It's about the GameCube. Did you notice? I hope so, because that would be a little weird if you didn't. Anyway, check out the uh, top 10 best GameCube games. And uh, we also played some Universal Studio on PB and Jeff on the Gameplay channel. Uh, if you want to see some of that, we played some other bad uh, GameCube games on there, too. So check those out when they come out. All right, see you next time. Subscribe, like the video. Bye-bye!